This is a response video. I am not going to name the person in which it is a response to, because I don't want anyone to go to her channel and say mean things to her. She only has 4 subscribers and her videos average about a dozen views. So I don't want the community to get angry and go to her channel talking smack. Um, hi YouTube. Um, I think I recorded this video before, but um, I deleted it because um, I made a few errors. Um, and I think I can make a better one explaining myself. Um, I also used the word God in the last one. I don't know why because I'm not religious. Um, I kind of meant creator, nature, whatever, but it just kind of slipped out, so yeah. Um, I would like to explain myself and why I think that MRAs are genuinely no better than feminists. Um, feminists and MRAs, I think, they both sort of aim for the same things. Um, they both sort of like aim to destroy the patriarchy. And they both well, MRAs don't typically acknowledge the existence of a patriarchy to begin with. Although to be fair, feminists have used the word patriarchy as such a catch-all phrase that means different things at different times of the day, so we can't exactly say there is no truth to any aspect of patriarchy theory, only that the term is so vague, so catch-all, as to be meaningless. Gentlemen, I informed her that I was making a video response and asked if she could clarify patriarchy for me. She wrote the following. I define patriarchy as men working outside the home and earning money and women staying at home and doing the chores and looking after the children. Men are usually the ones in well-paid jobs because this enables them to support their family. In a patriarchal society gender roles are rarely reversed unless a woman chooses not to get married and have children and lives as a spinster, there was a time in history where married women were not allowed careers. If a woman chooses to get married and have children I believe she should submit her life to her family and it's the husband's role to be the provider and all big decisions need to go past him. I think that there are negative patriarchies, these are usually based on religion, that's why I am not religious, and there are positive ones that are peaceful and where violence and corruption is frowned upon. I believe that men and women should respect each other and embrace their differences and natural roles instead of society heading towards gender neutral. I think that if society does become gender neutral relationships will lose their value and gradually people will lose sexual interest in the opposite sex altogether because it's what makes us different that most of us subconsciously find attractive. If you look at every tribal society all of them are patriarchal to some extent and many live in peace at the same time. Feminists think that the patriarchy oppresses women but I beg to differ. Women years ago could still study to be doctors and lawyers but they had to give up their career when they got married. That to me is how it should be. Alright, so what she's basically referring to is traditionalism, the way things were before feminism. And they both aim to trash gender roles, which I think is a bad thing in itself because you get... Ooh, Jimmy! Pulling my computer. Well, basically I think that um, MRAs are just as bad as feminists because they all essentially seem to aim for the same things. Number one is trashing of the patriarchy, and number two is abolition of traditional gender roles, which I believe in a way is harmless in itself. And um, basically, um, you get good patriarchy and bad patriarchy. Patriarchy, good patriarchy is where men and women respect each other but men are usually head of the household and men and women have different roles and it's a society based on love and peace. Bad patriarchy is usually dominant, dominated by something like religion and men have right to hurt women and they think it's okay to hurt women and children. Alright stop right there. There has never been a society where the general consensus was it is good or proper for adults to hurt children and for men to hurt women. In fact, every society has been the polar opposite. All societies have placed the safety of children over adults, and the safety of women over men. The concept of women and children first has been around long before the Titanic. Furthermore, don't bring religion into this. Even though I am an atheist, and have no personal reason to defend religion, I can honestly tell you that religion is not the cause of what you describe as bad patriarchy. 
In fact, this whole good patriarchy versus bad patriarchy is just pure nonsense. And what system of government should our new nation have? I say it should be a monarchy. I say it should be a constitutional republic. What about a monarchy? How about an anarcho-capitalistic utopia? Gentlemen, gentlemen, a monarchy is classical and traditional. What we need is a patriarchy. Yes, a patriarchal monarchy. How about a free market patriarchy? No, we need a negative patriarchy, a sort of, what's the word? Bad patriarchy. I don't care how bad it is, it better involve lots of constitutional worship and free market. Gentlemen, picture this. Since the dawn of time adults have looked after children and men have looked after women. You can get that in a monarchy. Stick a king in there and it's a patriarchal monarchy. What's the problem? We can get that from a free market. Free market protects women, children, and cures cancer. Gold standard free market or get the fuck out. Gentlemen, I am saying this tradition of building societies with women and children first, must come to an end. We need a society that puts men and adults first. Or even better, allows and glorifies the hurting of women and children. A king can smack his bitch and even have his son executed. Monarchal patriarchy. Free market can force women into prostitution and promote child labor. Free market or get the fuck out. I want to live in a pro-domestic violence world supported through socialism. We need to hurt women and children. They've had it too good for too long. But why not create a positive or good patriarchy? I mean it one is as easy as the other. Why not a positive patriarchy? Sure I guess we could create a positive patriarchy, but then, then we couldn't smack children and hurt women. I say socialism and negative patriarchy for the win. Why are we having this discussion in church? Because we need religion to make a bad patriarchy. Didn't you know? How about a negative monarchy? Free market or get the fuck out. Well, that's bad patriarchy. So patriarchy can actually be a positive thing. Um, there are societies that exist with positive patriarchy and there are societies that exist with negative patriarchy. I'm afraid I am seriously going to have to ask you for examples of both. At least then maybe we can understand even vaguely what you're talking about. Okay. And the assumption of feminism is that all patriarchy is negative, which is not true. Um, I think it's the healthiest way for a family to operate, and I'm not saying this, I'm not, you know, saying that, oh, I'm not an extremist, I'm not saying, oh, you're terrible if you don't think like this, but... The way that, that the healthiest way for a family to operate is that for the man to go out and provide and make a living and for him to bring home the bread and for the woman to stay at home and look after the children and the house and run the errands and look after their family's health and just generally manage the home. So the best way for a society to function is to have men slave their lives away while women sit home watching TV? Let's be real. Women staying at home and taking care of the house is not equal to a man holding full-time employment. Here's comedian Bill Butter comically demonstrate what we all know is true but are too polite to say. Like really? Being a mother is the most difficult job on the planet? Oh yeah, all those mothers who die every year from black lung, from inhaling all that coal dust. What would you rather be doing? Drilling to the center of the earth, shaking hands with the devil? Every time there's a rumble in the ground, you wait for the whole thing to collapse down on top of you so they can write that folk song about you, you know? Would you rather be up in the sunshine, running around with a couple of toddlers that you can send to bed anytime you want on some sort of trumped up charges? Dude, women are just constantly patting themselves on the back about how difficult their lives are and no one corrects them because they want to them. I thought roofing in the middle of July is a redhead. I thought that that was difficult. But these mothers are bending over at the waist, putting DVDs into DVD players. I don't know how they do it. Dude, any job that you can do in your pajamas is not a difficult job, all right? Give me a break. Jesus Christ, you're 35 years old, playing hide and go seek. You're living the dream. You're living the dream. No time card, no tax 
Jesus, you're off the f grid! Barbarossa has a video, link in the description, where he reads an article and comments, about career women feeling like their stay-at-home house husband isn't pulling his weight, and mentions the ironic thing is, when women stay home with the kids, she claims she is providing a valuable service equal but different to her husband, but when those roles are reversed, suddenly she feels she is doing all the work, all I can say is, welcome to our world ladies, at any rate, you think the proper way for a society to function is for women to stay at home like spoiled pampered princesses while the husband works his life away like a slave, yeah, that's real convenient for you, you would be the beneficiary of that slavery, but what about the men, that's not exactly fair to us, but more than just unfair to men, it's no longer practical, I made a video on why traditionalism fails, link in the description, I'll just summarize it for now, once women were given hardly any real employment options, their bodies were too weak to do the harsh physical work, traditionalism fails because the industrial revolution has made it possible for non-physically taxing jobs to exist, and pay a livable wage, housework in this day is only a fraction of what it used to be in the days before electricity and modern appliances, in world war II, so many women joined the workforce while the men fought in the war, this let the genie out of the bottle, and once uncorked, we can't put the genie back in, being self-sufficient is a realistic option to any woman in the industrialized western world, traditionalism can only work if artificial means are erected to force people into their traditional role, either we outright illegalize women holding employment, and thus also remove them from school since they won't be needing to know things like trigonometry to change diapers, and take away their right to vote since people who contribute nothing to an economy, nothing to a nation, and have no education, and exist solely as parasites to society, have no need to be voting, or else we really can't go back to being a traditionalist society, individual couples can try to play that game, but it doesn't work for the nation as a whole, well, I am no feminist, but I want to keep this option as last, I don't want to remove women from the workplace by law, and to withhold them from education, and force them into a parasitic lifestyle without the option to be more, I don't want to take part in erecting those drastic and inhumane laws, not if there is any other way we can fix our gender problems and have a reasonably fair and balanced society that functions and prospers, I will not rule out erecting such laws, but I am willing to try just about anything and everything first, I genuinely believe that women are capable of achieving remarkable things when they are properly motivated, it's just a matter of knocking them off of their protected and pampered pedestals and lighting a fire under their ass to motivate them, women aren't anywhere near as weak and helpless as they act, the more helpless a woman acts, the more men do for them to compensate, thus women fall into the trap of playing the professional victim, gentlemen, when women pout and ask you to change a light bulb, tell them to change it themselves, I assure you, they know how to change that light bulb, and if they don't, I am confident she can figure it out, ladies, no more pouting and fainting, us MRAs and MIGTO know you can do it, and therefore we're not going to do it for you, get off your lazy asses and pull your own weight, you either pull your own weight, or we take away all of your human rights and send you back to being property of the father handed off to your new husband. Because this compromise between the two, this getting the best of both worlds shit comes to an end. And men and women to love and respect each other, and for that whole foundation to be based on love, respect, and the fact that men and women make up for each other's differences. And I feel that a lot of MRAs and feminists just aim to trash this. What complementary differences should be respected, women are weak, thus a man must be strong, women are emotional wrecks, thus a man must be stable, women are cowards, thus men must be brave, all the positive attributes of the male, are basically the attributes that women don't have, and what positive attributes do women have? They have spreading their legs and giving men sex, they have, I guess you can say superior communication skills, too bad nearly all of that is geared to deceive and manipulate, or maybe the more watered down politically correct way of saying that is, geared towards personal agency, I don't believe there is even one feminine quality that is beneficial to a relationship or a society, other than soothing a man's sexual frustration, you say men and women should respect one another, I hope you understand respect is a thing that is earned, not given, what exactly do women do to earn the respect of their husband, I know what the man does, he goes to work and provides her with food, shelter, clothing, and lots of fancy gifts, and then endorse one hormonal insecurity driven drama holic emotional tantrum after another from his wife, so please, don't even try to bullshit me with the idea that stay at home housewives contribute equally to a relationship, and that her feminine differences from her male counterpart is a value difference, those differences are not values, they're burdens. 
and it's not good for anyone. They seem to advocate casual sex, which is something I'm against. Actually, you're wrong about both feminists and MRAs here. A casual sex attitude is split down the middle in the men's rights movement, and same with the feminists. That's another thing, that's another issue that I have with feminists and MRAs. And then MRAs seem to say that they want financial abortion because women can have physical abortions. And sorry, but that makes me really sad because um, shouldn't they be fighting against the fact that women are allowed to have abortions instead of asking to have some form of abortion themselves because that makes them just as bad as the women who are having abortions. Actually I think something like two thirds of MRAs are against abortion, or maybe it's split down the middle, but it seems to me there is a lot of pro-lifers in the movement, now here's what really gets me, you claim men wanting a financial abortion, a term I have never heard of by the way, is every bit as bad as women wanting a biological abortion, so you are telling me, a woman that is pro-life, believes that men getting the option to opt out of supporting a child he has no right to see, is just as bad as a woman aborting her baby, so first off, you believe a man should be forced to pay for a child, a child he has no right to raise, or just a child he doesn't want, so if a man breaks up with a woman because she's a pain in the ass bipolar cunt and her pussy ain't worth all the drama she causes, and she retorts with oh by the way, I'm pregnant with your kid, that man should have to pay for that child, and when she moves in with her new boyfriend, and lifts off of his money like a parasite, that man should still be financially responsible for that kid, okay, first, that's fucked up, but what gets me? What really gets me is, you believe abortion is murder, but skipping on child support is equal to murder, you honestly think a man not wanting to financially support that baby's mama, is on par with murder? I can't fucking believe that. So yeah, I really don't like it, and just to note, I'm not conservative in all my views whatsoever, um, I, I, I just think, I just wish we had a society that was based more on love and respect and that men and women could embrace their differences instead of fighting against them. I wish we lived in a society where men were viewed as something other than walking ATMs and plow horses. I just want to live in a society where my sex is treated like human beings instead of disposable utilities to pamper females. And in one or two of your videos, you claim that you are pro-welfare. Now I could make an entire video response just on that, but let me touch on this subject real quick. You advocate for a traditional way of life that you have deemed patriarchy. Yet welfare is one of the biggest reasons traditionalism doesn't work, I've already expressed the other reasons, the really complicated reasons, but one of the simplest reasons is welfare, as long as women, thanks to both traditionalism and feminism, are pretty much guaranteed to get child custody, which is basically hitting the jackpot in divorce court, and they are practically guaranteed to get welfare, they have zero motivation to work through tough times and make a marriage last. Thus we live in an instant divorce society destroying marriages and making the traditional way of life impossible. You support right-wing traditionalism when it benefits women, and then you support left-wing socialism when it benefits women. You claim to be neither left or right. And I'm not going to be told otherwise because, and I'm not trying to be politically correct, and I am not trying to be, you know, I'm not just... I'm not a bleeding heart liberal either. I, I would class myself as moderate because I have some views that would be classed as conservative. I'm not a feminist. I do believe somewhat in traditional gender roles, although I'm not homophobic and I'm not against gay and I'm not against transgender people. They have... I, I, I care about them just as much as I care about anybody else. And I also am anti-abortion. So yeah, those are things about me that could be classed as conservative. I believe that the woman should stay at home and raise the children and the man should go out to work and earn money. So yeah, I, I suppose you sh can't call me a li liberal then. You can't call me a conservative either. So I'm not on either side of the fence. I have my own set of beliefs and I like to think of myself as a person that cares about other human beings. Hey guys, remember in my video entitled Ending the Left-Right Paradigm, I said that our nation will never be all left or all right, but will be some degree of compromise between the two, and women, not even feminists, but just women in general, will use both the left and the right, to give themselves preferential treatment at the expense of men? Remember when I said that? Well this woman is supporting my case, 
She's all about traditional right wing when it involves her and her sisters sitting home watching TV while the man slaves his life away, but then she is immediately left wing socialist when an aspect of that wing benefits divorced and unmarried women with welfare. Did I call it or what? And if you remember, I also said in that video that when people claim MRAs are every bit as bad as the feminists, that's nothing more than a cry for traditionalism. Again, I made that video before I even seen this woman's channel, so did I call it or did I call it? Anyhow, you claim in the 12th video that these people are taking a very small amount of money from the government, let me explain something, money from the government is money from the taxpayer, and you know who pays taxes, the people with jobs, and according to you, it's a man's place to work while the women stay home, so a man works 40 hours a week to pay for your clothes, and your food, and the house you get to relax in all day, and for your child. That's right your child, since the moment you get tired of his dick you can leave him, and due to traditional views, you as the mother are more entitled to the child than he is, so it's your child that you can take away from him whenever you want, so he works 40 hours a week to support you and your child and he pays for your phone, and internet, and cable TV, and when times get tough, and 40 hours a week doesn't pay the bills, he has to work an additional 10 to 15 hours a week to continue supporting you, and then, on top of all that, the women who divorce their husbands and take the child, should then get welfare money out of his paycheck, so not only is he supporting you and your child, but he is also supporting other women and their children too, and therefore he has to add yet another 10 to 15 hours to compensate for the raise in his taxes, and you, you have no problem with this, in case you don't get it, all of your arguments are very self-serving, men should work hard to support and pamper you and they should work even harder to support and pamper you if you choose a divorce or to have a child out of wedlock, men are just disposable utilities whose function in life is to prop up an entire way of life that pampers you at their expense, I find that to be horribly offensive and downright hateful towards men, we are not your slaves, we are human beings, and that's why we have a men's rights movement, we have feminists inflating domestic violence and rape statistics to prop up their victim narrative to empower themselves at our expense, and then we have women like you, every woman that doesn't identify as a feminist, women that just want the luxury of staying at home and having men slave their lives away for them. Do you see why there is a need for a men's rights movement? Now do you see why I have kept your channel anonymous? Your views are so selfish, so bigoted, so female supremacist, so misandric and offensive, that my audience would bombard you with the hate and rage that you have elicited in them. Just put yourself in our shoes, madam. Imagine that just because you were born with a penis, it is your job to work and support your mate, getting fired or laid off, means your mate will leave you and take away your child, and yet, you will still have to pay for that child that is now being raised by her and her new boyfriend, and so you are supporting your ex-wife with alimony, supporting a child you don't get to see, and if you can't afford to keep up with those payments, for any reason whatsoever, you will go to prison, our rape factory called prison, and when you get raped in prison, no one feels sorry for you, you keep it to yourself because our society wouldn't feel sympathy for you, they just call you a faggot, and once you get out of prison, and somehow find a job, you are buried in debt, and then slowly you pay off your ex-wife debt, and then slowly work your way up the ladder, and then find a new wife, and then you get her knocked up, so now you are paying for your ex-wife, a child you haven't been allowed to see in 5 or 6 years, and your new wife, and your new child, and on top of all of that, you have your taxes raised even higher to pay for even more women, women and their bastard children that you've never seen, so now you have to work even harder, or find yourself unable to support your new wife and new kid who then leave you and take your house and car and put you into even more debt. But tough shit, you were born with a penis, so this is your role in society. Now, after putting yourself in our shoes, do you see why there is a men's rights movement? And you know what really and truly gets me, all the work, all the sacrifice that us men have made to pamper and spoil the women folk, and what thanks do we get, we get feminists calling us all potential rapists and oppressors, we get traditionalists cracking the whip and screaming work harder, work faster, that's your job as a man, and we get laughed at and mocked and scolded when one day we stand up and claim that we are people, not disposable tools, not plow horses, not walking ATMs, but people, human beings. It reminds me of probably the most profound thing I've heard from anyone in the movement. Goodfellow said. The thing that I really like the least about women is that they have never got our back when it comes to men, I mean, right? They have never got our back. 
And this just really annoys me when a lot of things to take into consideration with it is um, all the things that men in general throughout history have done for women and still do for women. The average man would put his life on the line to save a woman he doesn't even know, right? That's just the average man. Is the incident on the talk when uh, Sharon Osborne and all her colleagues uh, decided to mock and laugh at the the mutilation of an elderly man, right? An elderly man was tied up and mutilated, but because it was at the hands of a woman and because it was his penis that was mutilated, this was seen as funny. Sharon Osborne started laughing at it, then they all started laughing at it, then the audience all started laughing at it, and I'm pretty certain that all the women watching the show at home laughed at it and thought it was hysterical that a, an elderly man was mutilated by a woman. What what I mean with the 95% is, only one woman in that entire studio, and it was Darlene from Roseanne, and she said, uh, well, Sarah Gilbert, but Darlene I call her, and she, she's the only one who said, look, this isn't right, if this was a woman we wouldn't be laughing at this. And what did all the women do? Did they then go, oh, Jesus, that's a good point, Sarah, that's a really good point, you're right, we shouldn't be laughing at this, thanks for... This is what I mean. In our worst moment, you, you laugh at us and you mock us when you should have our back. You should defend us and stick up for us, but you don't. In your worst moment, we would put our life on the line to save you and protect you. And yet, in our worst moment, you laugh at us, you mock us, you actually enjoy our suffering. You enjoy our suffering, right? And the fact that you never have our back... That's right. Women don't have our backs. When a war must be fought to empower a nation, it is the men who go off and die. When a war must be fought to defend our land, it is the men who must go off and die. When food needs to be brought to the table it was always men who joined in hunter parties and risked their lives in the vicious jungles. When the rent is due, it is men who put in those extra hours to earn the income to keep up with the bills. When irresponsible women want to breed like rabbits, it's us men who have to take up even more work hours to support their socialist system. We have always worked hard, and then worked even harder when needed, took the chances and made the sacrifices, and always ran to your rescue, and when us men are so disenfranchised and abused by feminists who blame us for anything they can imagine, where are the non-feminists at, do they have our backs, fuck no, they have knives in our backs telling us that our effort to be seen and treated like humans is out of line, and we're every bit as bad as the feminists, we've always had your backs, and you've never had ours, sure feminists claim they're looking out for us too, they claim it with hollow words, but we never see it in action, in fact, we see the polar opposite, they claim they're looking out for marginalized men, they mean non-white men, non-straight men, disabled men etc, what about the normal everyday common man, furthermore they're not even looking out for those men, the feminist channel on YouTube called those pesky dames goes on a flagging spree and started flagging MRA videos that mentioned them, funny thing is, you know who got hit the most was me and an individual named Snake Pliskinist, Snake, wore an eye patch because his eye was fucked up, you know that technically makes him disabled. They had a lot of his videos taken down, right after they make a few videos crying about able privilege and how the poor disabled people are so marginalized, right after crying a river about able privilege, they flag a disabled man's videos, I was hit the second hardest, and I can't physically speak. That's right, I have no voice, I say so right on my channel description, it's why I use this text to speech program, I have no voice, so how do they look out for me? by flagging my videos and taking away my voice to speak out against their opinions, wow, so according to them I am marginalized, not that I consider myself marginalized, so what do they do to look out for this marginalized man without a voice, they flag his videos taking away his ability to speak his opinions thus marginalizing him even more, the other two people they flagged was Sparky Fister, a black man, and the Critical G, a Jewish man, hell, with the exception of Chaz Wild Almighty, I think every person they flagged fell under the feminist category of marginalized, so for all their lip service about looking out for marginalized men, the channel consisting of five feminists plus multiple feminist guest stars, doesn't give a fuck about marginalized people, we see the feminists protesting the male birth control pill.
they're all in favor of their reproductive rights, including the right to abort their unborn baby at their discretion, but they don't want men to have any control over reproduction, it is crystal clear to anyone, feminists don't have men's backs, in fact, they're attacking us, and we need someone to have our back from them, since they're the ones erecting special protection laws for themselves, special persecution laws against us men, holding us ever harder to obligations, while working hard to make themselves exempt from responsibilities, feminists, under all their equality rhetoric, work around the clock to give women options, and men obligations, so what about the non-feminists, do they have our backs, fuck no, they have knives in our backs reinforcing the notion that children should be with their mother, not father, and that a man's role is to slave his life away to financially prop up his wife, and women in general through socialist welfare taxes, women, feminist or otherwise, do not have our backs. Do you see why there is a men's rights movement, is it so hard for you women to just understand that us males do not exist for the express purpose of pampering and supporting you women, you know, I see where John the other is coming from when he pushes this men's human rights angle, just the notion that men are humans, is a radical notion. The word men, is more than just the word you assign to your punching bag, your disposable soldier, your plow horse, your credit card, men is what you call human beings who were born with a penis, we're humans, not utilities, our rights really are human rights, and I just want the world to know that, us men, are people too, so you claim you don't support MRAs because we're every bit as bad as the feminists because we're not focused on forcing men to slave their lives away for the benefit of women, well you know what, I'm just fine with that. This movement isn't about what makes women happy, or what makes them feel safe and protected, this movement is about us, this movement is about men being treated like people.